In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up ZMK on the ErgoBlue. To get started, you'll want to navigate to this webpage and download the compiled binaries. The link is in the description. Once you have downloaded the hex files, you'll want to open NRF Connect. NRF Connect is Nordic's program for loading firmware onto the two keyboard halves and the external dongle. Inside NRF Connect, you'll want to open the programmer. If you're running it for the first time, you may first need to install it. In order to update the firmware that is on either keyboard half or the external dongle, you will first need to press the reset button. Afterwards, the device should appear under this menu. You can then proceed to select the hex files. If you're updating the firmware for one of the two keyboard halves, you'll need both the file for that half along with the soft device. Here I will demonstrate how to update the firmware for the left half. I need to select both left.hex and softdevice.hex. Afterwards, simply press the right button to deploy the new firmware to the left half. Afterwards, you should see an error message similar to what is shown here. If you see this, that means the firmware has been successfully updated. You can then repeat the same process for the right half. Next, I will show you how to update the firmware on the external dongle, which will be running ZMK. The process is very similar, except you don't need to include soft device. You can start by flashing the dongle with the default firmware. Once you have both keyboard halves connected to the dongle and working, you can move on to customizing your key map. To do that, you'll want to start on the ErgoBlue ZMK configuration repository on GitHub. ZMK uses GitHub Actions to build a firmware for your custom key map, so you do not need to have any compiler installed locally. However, you will need a GitHub account. You'll want to fork the repository, which means GitHub will make a copy of it in your own account that you can make changes to. Once your fork has been created, you'll want to enable GitHub Actions. This way, it will automatically build your firmware each time you change your configuration. Now, you can make changes to your key map. To do that, you'll want to go to the config directory and edit the ErgoBlue.keyMap file. Here you can see the default key map, which has a QWERTY layout. As a Comac user, I'll want to change a lot of the keys, and to do that, I can simply click the Edit button. Once you've made all the necessary changes, you can scroll down and click Commit Changes. GitHub Actions will then start to build your new firmware binary. This will likely take a minute or two. Once GitHub Action has finished, you can click the Artifacts button and download the newly compiled firmware. You can then load it onto the dongle the same way you have done previously. If at some point you're having difficulty establishing the connection between the dongle and the two keyboard halves, you'll want to enable USB debugging. To do that, you'll want to edit the config ErgoBlue configuration file. Simply copy the given lines from the firmware page and save the file so GitHub Actions can rebuild the firmware with USB debugging enabled. Once you have loaded the new firmware onto the dongle, there are many different programs that you can use to view the log. Arduino is the simplest cross-platform program, though there are many other options. See the firmware page for more details.